Welcome to Bolt and Brass. Today we are doing something we haven't done in a while. Uh, a pretty much straight educational video. I know I did the one on eye relief recently, but that was pretty specific to a very small group of people for my channel. So today we're doing basically some fundamentals. Uh, trigger control, body position in terms of how the, the rifle's position in your body, and how to hold it. And I'm using an AR-15, but what we're talking about for the most part is almost universal. Uh, if you've got some really strange design, maybe it doesn't apply. But most of this is, is going to be universal, whether you've got a traditional bolt action, lever action, single shot, you know, rolling block, whatever. Uh, this just happened to be what I had handy that had the bipod on from a previous video. This is actually not a setup I normally use. This upper usually lives on a different lower. Anyway, that's what we're doing today, and let's get into it. So first, since we're gonna be pulling the trigger quite a bit, clear, clear, if I can get my pinky in there, clear, very dirty. Yeah, oh well, so. I've not cleaned this upper since the last few range trips. I'm gonna leave that back for now, just because we're not gonna, we don't need it closed yet. Step one, if you've got a bipod or some sort of front rest, don't put your hand up here. Don't, don't be doing this. This hand doesn't do anything up here. The bipod is doing that job. The bipod is, is handling all the support up here. If you want to do anything, you can grab the bipod just to keep the gun more stable under recoil. But honestly, if you're, if you're looking for maximum precision, even that is probably not in your best interest. No matter what you do, every point of contact that you have with the rifle potentially adds movement, potentially adds vibration. So you want those points of contact to be as stable as possible. And those are almost always your torso. They, they're your shoulder, they're this elbow when it's, it's mostly resting on the ground and can't move any further, okay? This hand way out here, not stable. It is your least stable point. That's why when you're shooting offhand, it's wobbling around like that. It's not wobbling around like this. It's going like that, right? This is not the hand you want to use if you don't need it. It comes back here. So what it's doing, and you can put a bag here. You can put a, a squeeze bag. You can, if you've got a hook, you can put it in the hook. All it's doing is helping keep the rifle in your shoulder. It is not particularly controlling the elevation unless you're using a squeeze bag. Its job is to keep the rifle in position as you maybe shift around a little bit to get on target. This hand comes and goes because you're, you're putting a magazine in or you're doing something else. This hand is just kind of keeping things there. But this is a lot more stable than when it's out here. This is, this is a much more stable look. My arm is all the way down on the ground. Whether this is a table, whether this is the ground, if I'm shooting prone, it is down. It is fully supported. Okay. What this is also demonstrating is the, the stock is against my shoulder firmly. I'm not digging it in really tight. I'm not shoving my shoulder hard forward into it. But it is firmly into my shoulder. It is, it is I can feel it against my shoulder solidly. Now, if you've got really sharp checkering on the back here <clears throat> and you're wearing a t-shirt, you should feel that checkering. It shouldn't hurt, it shouldn't be digging in, but you should feel it. it. It shouldn't be so loose that it's wobbling around on your shirt. If you're wearing a heavy jacket, this gets even more important because it's very easy for that heavy jacket to, to have crinkled and you're not really as solidly in contact with your shoulder. The last thing you want is for when you pull the trigger, for the gun to recoil at all without you. 
you want it to be recoiling with your whole body as a system. Your body is the shock absorber, is essentially what you're doing. If it has to recoil, and this is going to be really loud and squeaky, I apologize. If it has to recoil without you, okay, you see what happens? It can move much more freely. And, I mean, on a 223, it really doesn't matter. But if you're firing something bigger, it's going to hurt. Uh, that free recoil, it, it's like getting punched. It's like getting just absolutely smacked in the shoulder, uh, hopefully. Uh, if you accidentally move it too far inward, you, that's how people break collarbones, is they, they've got it not quite in position, and they're firing something big enough that it, it puts a good bit of force out, and it, it basically just smacks their collarbone and breaks it. So, we've talked about forehand. Get it back here. If there's nowhere back here for it to go, just tuck it out of the way. It can sit here. It can sit back here. <laughs> it has no excuse to be up here. There's nothing it's doing that's worthwhile up here. Okay? Even doing like this, no. Forget it. Keep it off the front of the rifle. There is no benefit up here. Now, I'm not going to say never. Okay? There, there are scenarios. If you've got a situation where your bipod absolutely has no good hold, you, you almost have to hold it in place, you do what you got to do. Um, if you've got a bag or something, you have to hold that bag so that it doesn't slide away if you're on a steep slope or something. Okay. But minimize it. How, how little can you use that? There's always the what ifs. We're talking general concepts here. Now, we talked about against your shoulder. That is key. You've got to find your spot. For me, it's kind of right here. It's inboard of my actual armpit, but outboard of my collarbone, okay? It's right in here. And everybody's a little different, uh, and it also depends on what position you're shooting. If I shoot straight forward, I'm standing head on to the target, uh, which is a, a common modern style for tactical rifle. You assume you're wearing body armor, so you're presenting the body armor to the threat. Uh, it's actually a relatively poor shooting position. It's a better defensive position. So if you're face on, you actually bring inboard a little bit. It's, it's more right here rather than out here. That has more to do with your head position. You can't really, it, it's hard to get your head way over. So you bring the gun in line with your head. Again, in contact, firm, steady contact. Now, trigger control. And here you get into things that pistol, rifle, shotgun, almost anything. And before I get blasted, yes, shotgun guys, I know there are times where this doesn't really apply. You're pulling the trigger faster than this. Uh, it's almost like, I don't want to say you're slapping the trigger, uh, but it's definitely a, a much different motion. So, we've previously demonstrated it's clear. Tried to keep the volume down. I hope that didn't spike my audio. So, pretend you've got this in your shoulder. Okay, this is a two-stage trigger. Okay, which means, hopefully this shows up good on, on the audio. This first movement, there's spring tension but I'm not actually moving any of the internal mechanism that is going to set the gun off. I'm pre-setting everything into place. So it comes back to here. And I'm adding pressure, adding pressure, adding pressure, and it goes off. Okay? Preset. And really, you shouldn't touch the trigger until you're ready to fire. But once you're on target, you can be on the trigger on a two stage. And then you're, okay, I'm, I'm ready to start my shot. You push back, you're on that second, second stage. Now, the extra pressure for that second stage varies. This trigger, relatively heavy. This is not a, a target style trigger. So, in position, 
and you just keep adding pressure. You don't, you don't just power through it. That, that is a last resort kind of situation. It's gentle add pressure, straight back. More, more, bang. Now, when you're doing that over here, Okay, so I took up pressure, straight back, straight. This part of my hand, the lower part of my hand, I'm not squeezing. It's something you gotta be watchful for. I'm holding, but I don't keep increasing the tension. I'm not clamping down on it. Get your, get your grip. And some people even leave this, leave this thumb over here because it's easy to torque the gun one way or the other on a rifle. It's easier on a pistol, but you kind of need that thumb over there. But people do do this. Uh, it helps avoid a little extra weird pressure on it. But really, you got your grip firm but, but soft. You're not trying to death grip this thing. Holding, holding, only this finger is adding tension. Holding, 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 dang. And... If you do it right, you know it's going to go off, but that exact moment is a bit of a surprise. It's a, uh, we're getting there, we're getting there. Oh, yeah, they're in. And, I mean, if you do it enough times, it loses some of the actual surprise value. Um, your body learns exactly when it's going to happen, but you're still, you're steadily just adding pressure till it goes. You're not trying to game it, so to speak. Uh, if you're not on target, if you drift off where you want to put, ease up. Back on target, continue adding pressure. It's not a, I'm going to be on target, I'm going to be on smack. It doesn't work that way. That's only for basically really short range, really fast shooting. And even then, what I'm talking about, you can do quickly. You just speed the whole process up. Okay, next thing. You notice that my finger is still back, right? When you're... Okay, so the internal mechanism will reset as if it had fired. Obviously, without any ammo in it, it's not actually semi-auto, right? So my finger is still back. As I let forward, the trigger resets. You want to keep your finger back during the shot. Don't, don't bounce it. Don't do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do it. Okay, my finger came back off the trigger. You want to ride that reset forward, and still have your finger on the trigger. Bang. Oh. Come forward, and then, not off, but but I've uncompressed my finger pad. My finger pad is no longer compressed against the trigger like this. It's loose. Now sometimes I, I clear the trigger a little bit. It's not the end of the world. What you don't want to do is this bounce. You don't want to be, because it leads you to smack the trigger, to, to just yank on that trigger. You don't ever want to do this. I'm off the trigger, bang. The whole gun is going to bounce. The whole gun is going to move. It's almost impossible to get a good shot that way. At, at 15 feet, will it matter? Probably not. At 50 feet, it probably does. At 50 yards, it does. At 100 yards, it definitely does. At 200 yards, you could miss a whole torso. Easy. You, you jerk the gun way off to one side or the other. So... Get that trigger control under control. Practice it. Now, this is what you're doing when you're dry firing a pistol, is you're learning that trigger squeeze, and you're learning when it goes off, how it goes off, how to keep that under control so the gun doesn't jerk one way or the other, right? In a rifle, it's easier. There's more mass holding it in place. It's less picky.
I blinked. I, I tend to do that. It's a very annoying, bad habit. And you've got to practice these things. You've got to do it over and over and over and over regularly. I don't dry fire enough. Uh, not with the rifles. I try to. There's only so many hours in the day, right? You got to practice it. And you've got to practice it consciously. You've got to be thinking about it. What am I doing wrong? Okay, let me focus on not doing that. Let me. What am I supposed to be doing right? And repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. These are the things that will make you a better shot. Uh, not like the, the silly video I posted yesterday. I mean, don't get me wrong. Practicing under some distraction is not a bad thing. Practicing awkward positions does help with fundamentals. It's just things you got to practice. Time on the range is critical. I know, ammo's scarce. Uh, people don't have time. Social distancing. Dry fire. Get to the range. Practice. You don't get any better if you're not getting any trigger time. So... Take care, have fun, stay safe, y'all, and I will see you next time. Say hi. Oof. Oof. Oof.